Hi, I'm Anson the Million Dollar Crow, and you're watching Seconds Out. Uh, it's Jonathan Shragit. I'm here today with Adam Smith, head of Sky Sports Boxing. How are we doing, Adam? Very well, thank you. Very lovely. And obviously, you would have been instrumental in when Matchroom and Sky Sports um, decided to collaborate as a promoter broadcaster partnership. Do you have any kind of role when it comes to actually promoting events as well? No, we we don't promote the events. That's that's up to to Matchroom or, or whichever promoter we 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 have a contract with. I mean, we've worked over the years with Frank Warren and Frank Maloney and Ricky Hatton and Mick Hennessy and a whole you know, a whole wide range of, of different promoters. We've got a deal at the moment with Eddie Hearn, um, which uh, which I'm enjoying. I think Eddie's putting on really good fights. I think the nights are, um, are big and there's really getting the atmosphere and, and good sort of 55, 45 type fights on. Um, we don't promote the event, but obviously we work closely in uh, in, in, in communications with, with Matchroom about about, um, about the cards and about where we want the fighters to go and that sort of thing. But really, our job is to provide the TV coverage mm -hmm. and to make sure that the, the fans at home get the most exciting night and that we, we hopefully with Ringside and our other programmes and, and, and our, you know, our sort of partners in, in Sky with Sky Sports News and the website to make sure that boxing is covered yeah. as much as we can from every angle. I mean, we know we can't have, have all the fights. We know we can't have deals with everybody, but, you know, we've uh, we've got what we have. Um, and um, I think boxing's in a really, really good place. Um, a fantastic event yeah. on May the 31st is, is, is with Frotch and Groves at Wembley is going to hopefully take the whole sport to another level. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, um, it's very exciting. My team and I are, are, are really, really enjoying what we're doing, and um, you know, I think good nights are ahead. Okay, and, and you mentioned it there with, with the Frotch Groves fight, which is obviously sort of a fight on an epic proportion, really, you know, monumental fight uh, at Wembley Stadium. Um, when you say you think it could take boxing to another level, yeah. How do you do you mean in terms of encouraging youngsters to, to get in the gym and things like that because it's such a showcase for boxing? I think boxing is a sport that, that is a real survivor and I also think it's a sport that, that goes in cycles. Mm. Uh, I mean, I've been at Sky for 20 years now um, and I've seen some of the great great fights of that of that period but but they're never sort of you know one after the other they're, they're never sort of you know it, it, it tends to be sort of a, a, a good spell for say at the moment the welterweights or mm. a good spell 10 years ago for the heavyweights, it tends to go in phases. And I think that with London 2012, mm -hmm. uh, there was a real upside of, of, of athletes, not just for the boxing, but I think, you know, the likes of Jess Ennis and Mo Farah, yeah. uh, you know, really gave uh, the whole country a, a massive lift. And you've got gleaming professional athletes who were, were well-trained in the media. And, and I think that, you know, people really related to them. And I think that's what we're going to get with this new generation, with Anthony Joshua, mm -hmm. with Luke Campbell, with Anthony Agogo. So I think that's going to really appeal to the kids. Nicola Adams as well, Katie. Taylor for, for the girls. Yeah. I think kids are, are getting into into uh, boxing classes and boxer size, and I think that that fitness, that that, that key sort of element and core is is right there. Yeah. Um, but I also think that uh, this is a, a a chance with a fight like Frotch and Groves, which yeah. which sort of catapulted into the casual audience last time because of the fact they didn't like each other. It brought back the sort of feeling of Ben and Eubank, mm -hmm. the controversial ending. Everyone wanted to know sort of who would who would have won the fight. It's going to happen again. People are going to see. You can see by the speed of the tickets flying out, by the interest. Just you know, even just around our sky buildings, for people who want to be at that fight or want to be involved in it, yeah. it's a huge fight. And I think it's an important for us to utilise that to really get into the casuals, get into the football fans, get into the wider audience, yeah. and hopefully take boxing. You know, not sometimes boxing is a trade sport. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we, we love the, the fights like Crawler uh, and Murray. It's fantastic. But, you know, not many people outside of the boxing world know about those guys. Yeah. What we need is people, you know, tuning in to what we know is a great sport. And I, and I really think that the likes of Frotch Groves and maybe if we got Amir Khan and Kel Brook together or, or De Gales, obviously, in the mix with Frotch and Groves. Some yeah. big, big British fights again. I think that will really start getting those casuals back well and truly. Yeah. And, and you alluded to it there with the sort of the genuine sort of animosity between cars and George yeah um, obviously at the the presser for the rematch there was a little shove from Carl yeah. um, which I think went viral via I think it was uh, Coogan's video yeah um, like you say because it's on such a national scale and there's such exposure and yeah. scrutiny here um, and you kind of mentioned the 
uh, role models with people like Luke Campbell, Anthony Joshua. Is it important that, that both men keep it under wraps during the build-up to the fight? Yeah, I think it is important. Um, I, mean, I think you just saw there with, with uh, Murray and Crawler. Yeah. You know, they, they were friends. That they're fighting each other tomorrow night and they are, you know, enemies for 12 rounds, but they'll they'll shake hands and have a beer afterwards and I think that's I think that's a really good thing um, but you know sometimes fighters just don't like each other you know and, and Frotch and, and Kessler were great with each other Frotch and Groves just aren't and yeah. I think George knows how to wind Carl up Carl knows that yeah. he doesn't like being around him um, and um, you know I, I, I think they just genuinely listen I, I know them both I know them both well and they're both they're both great guys in their own way. Yeah. They just are very different and, and they just don't get on. But I think it's important that they've got to keep that professionalism. Yeah. You know, a little a little shove, whatever. Not quite like brawling that, that you know, David Hay and Derek just already did with bottles and things like that. And I think that, that takes it to an unsavory level. And I think even they, the two of them would admit that now, that they had the fight, they hugged afterwards, it was all fine and it was a clean ending to what was a pretty ugly event, let's be honest. And I think that we've we've got to be a bit careful. I mean, listen, boxing's always had controversy, you know, figures like Mike Tyson and, you know, there's, there's that, that's sort of what a lot of fans like is that yeah. the good guy and the bad guy. But I think in, at the moment where we are with sport, yeah. and as I said, I mentioned the sort of the Olympics and, and the kids and, and the Joshua Campbell sort of the image now, I think yeah. it's important for Carl and George to be um, animated, yeah. to be, um, to, you know, to, to have their say. And, and obviously it's all part of the promotion. Yeah. But, um, but I think it's also important that they remember that they are sportsmen uh, and I think yeah. they will. And then obviously, you know, uh, Ringside, which is must-watch must TV for any UK boxing fan. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I mean, I was discussing with Johnny before, you know, you've, you've had really intense rivalries uh, seated next to each yeah. other. Yeah. And I said to Johnny, has there ever been a time when genuinely you thought something might escalate? Mm -hmm. um, and Johnny obviously said, yeah, there has been a few times and then there aren't any security on set to break things up. I mean, have you ever genuinely felt some sort of concern that it might overspill? Absolutely not. Not at all. Um, I think that, I think they, you know, fighters are, are uh, you know, a wonderful breed on the whole. I mean, I think, um, as I said, in 20 years of covering the sport, I could probably count on one hand fighters that just have, have, have been, you know, have been disrespectful, annoying. They're, they're just something that I just haven't quite gelled with. I think that the 99% uh, are structured individuals. You know, they, they, a lot of them have come from tough areas. You know, boxing's been a great discipline for them. It's given them a great focus. And I really believe that, um, that, it's, uh, that the fighters are the most accessible and the nicest of sportsmen, really, generally they are. Um, we had Amir Khan and Kel Brook next to each other, that was tense. We had Carl Frotch and George Groves next to each other, that was tense. We had George Groves and James DeGale next to each other. We've had Tyson Fury and David Hay next to each other, probably those. Maybe Harrison and Hay, they were just kept apart slightly um, by the way we did it. But do you know what? I've never been worried at all. Um, I don't think anything would happen. Um, and I think if something did they would regret it immediately you know because i just don't think that's that's part of um part of the uh, uh, of what they would want to portray yeah. um you know sometimes fighters you know they they you know they 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 can lose it occasionally you know we know that but um it hasn't happened on ringside I'm, I'm worried about it and that's why i bring them together because i know that you know you put Khan and brook together you get the feeling you get the intensity yeah and um and i think people can read a lot into that so it's yes yeah, it's just it's compelling viewing isn't it it is very much so um and, and then just sort of you mentioned with um potentially the showcase of frotch groves uh, you know propelling the the sport in the uk further even for more you know making it thrive even more so. yeah um Obviously, it's a sport that historically hasn't received lots of funding, say, comparatively to football yeah. when it comes to sports coverage. Yeah. Um, do you think in that case there might be even more funds made available in the pot to increase the coverage of boxing? Because obviously, whilst we, you know we all love ringside once a week, but arguably the boxing fanatics mm -hmm. would love to see even more more coverage if it was possible. And I mentioned to Eddie yesterday as well... Um, the UFC have a kind of reality show format, yeah. The Ultimate Fighter, and it's similar. I think it was called The Contender, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, things like this that would really capture the public imagination if there was the funding available. 
I, I've got a great bunch of guys at Sky. Okay, some some that have been there 10, 15 years, some that have been there, you know, two or three, and, and have really freshened up uh, creative, innovative ideas. And I think the way that Sky is working now, you know, we can work with Sky Sports News, Sky News, the radio, the website. <clears throat> There's a whole arsenal of things to really push it into to the wider the wider picture. But yes, we, we are always looking at ways of changing things. I mean, we brought uh, gloves are off, which uh, which Johnny does with with four fighters uh, around a table. There's a couple that we're, we're planning uh, in the coming weeks, which I think will be very surprising and, and hopefully very enjoyable for people. Um, uh, I think that's something that we brought. We brought ringside specials. We brought um, you know audiences in, people to watch ringside on the set. You know, we're trying to uh, we're trying to bring the fans uh, in. We're all fans. We're, we're trying to just you know make it as real as possible. You yeah. know, there, there are loads of good ideas. You know, yeah, reality shows, of course, and and coverage. You know, we'd love to have you know our pick of you know whether it's Mayweather's or Pacquiao's or whatever. You know. But there's a price to everything, as you know. Um, money is 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 uh, is needed for um, for a whole load of things, and you know, and there's there's decisions that are taken at Sky and at other places, which you know, how much should be spent on each different thing? Of course, there are. You know, BBC and ITV are not doing boxing anymore. Channel Five have, have dipped in. You know, Box Nation have a they have a dedicated boxing channel. You know, that's what they do. Yeah. I mean, we've got football, we've got cricket, we've got golf, we've got rugby. As I said, sometimes we're a trade sport. You know, with six or seven on the list yeah. but when it's frotch groves you know we can be number one for a, for a short window uh one or two you know football still is the big draw of course but i do believe that boxing can is a sleeping giant that it can become a number two or three again um and we've got great ideas and um you know hopefully with our relationship with matchroom um, and picking up whatever international um, action we can, um, we will continue to give the very best and deliver the very best, very best as we have been doing for for over 20 years on Sky. You know, most of the big fights, um, the great nights from you know Bruno McCall to the Nassim Hamad story, Ricky Hatton, most of the Cal Zaghi uh, days. You know, David Hay, Amir Khan, Carl Froch, and and all the the uh, the great fights like Barrera Morales and Gassi Ward and. Yeah. You know the heavyweights of Lewis Holyfield and Tyson. You know there's been some brilliant nights on Sky, and they'll they'll keep coming. But um, of course we uh, we have our budgets and we have our uh, well restrictions, and we'll do the very best we can within them. Yeah, and and then you sort of um, you mentioned. I mean, a lot of people at the moment are very excited within the boxing scene, particularly within the UK boxing fraternity. That, that the sport's really thriving, and you mentioned it's uh, sort of the circularity, or you know where it's ups, ups and downs really. Um, do you think, I did ask this Eddie as well yesterday, do you think there could be a time when, sort of similar to the F1 channel, there's a, there's a channel exclusively dedicated to Formula One on Sky? Do you think, you know, you never know, maybe in 10 years if the sport keeps progressing, that sort of thing could become available? For boxing? Yeah. I mean, it'd be great, wouldn't it? You know, but I mean, as I said, you know, Box Nation, for example, are a dedicated boxing channel. That's mm. what they put on. You know, we have... A number of channels and a huge amount of sport to uh, to to deliver. Um, so we are part of the uh, of the of the package, and it, it's a great package. You know, I mean, we whether, whether it's the, the Masters, the Golf of last week, or you know, or, or the big Formula Ones, or whether it's the the, the the race for the Premiership title, which we're all hooked on. You know, the, the sports coming from every every angle. I mean, I was watching a bit of the tennis at Monte Carlo earlier today with Nadal and Ferrer, and they were just you know knocking lumps out of each other. I mean, sport. Sport is, is fascinating and, it, and, it, and it obviously everyone has their own interests. As far as I'm concerned, I'm head of boxing at Sky. I want boxing to be as big as it can possibly be. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky that my boss, Marty Francis, is a boxing fan, um, which helps. But, uh, but obviously, you know, he's got a, um, a lot of different sports to look after. Um, will it ever become uh, you know, its own channel? I don't know. Um, but um, I think there's times where we can have as much boxing on as possible. I think yeah. you'll find the, the, the build-up to Frotch Groves at the end of May, I, I think you'll be, uh, be hard-pressed <laughs> to find a channel that doesn't have some sort of boxing on uh, yeah. on the Sky Sports platform for a few days there. So, um, so yeah, you know, there, there's, um, that, that's probably a way off, but we'll continue to do what we can to provide as much boxing um, from a, uh, an action point of view and from a you know a debate and theory and you know previews and reviews and magazine shows and all the rest of it because yeah. you know we know boxing fans uh, you know absolutely love 
um, a debate. They love a, they love a, they love us watching a scrap, and they love talking about it beforehand, during, and after. So yeah. we'll try and provide as much as we can from our point of view, and we're well supported. Let me, you know, re-emphasise that by the website. Yeah. You know, who do a terrific job by Sky Sports News, by Sky News. You know, we're lucky. We don't. We're not like Box Nation, where Box Nation have. Um, a sole boxing channel. I don't yeah. have that luxury. Yeah. But what we do have is we have a great support system yeah. that really helps promote boxing and what we do in, in the best possible way. And I think that people like um, Tony Bellew and Kel Brook and, and Darren Barker in recent months who have found that sort of exposure, yeah. um, you know, at, at this time in their careers or sort of later on, have um, have really enjoyed that. The fact that you know they've they've had that access to to um, to that whole arsenal. Yeah. And I'll, I'll let you go in a second. Obviously, I appreciate your time today. No problem. Um, I was going to ask then, with um, with the kind of the hoopla surrounding Frotch Groves. Yeah. When it comes, obviously, your head of Sky Sports Boxing, and and that's the broadcaster that. Yeah. You know, you have a your kind of remit is that you want fights that are going to uh, capture the public interest. Sure. And obviously, so does it come to a point? Obviously, after the first fight, massive controversy. Yeah. Do you sort of, I'm not saying you pressurise Eddie Hearn, but are you in contact with him to say, you know, this, this rematch sort of simply must happen because, you know, it's, it's potentially so big? I think we both wanted it to happen, didn't we? Yeah. I think everybody in British boxing wants it to happen. I mean, you know, you, you go around this room, any room yeah. of boxing fans, and, and it's going to be half George Groves, half Carl Froch. That's what yeah. makes a great fight. You know, personalities add the, the spice of the fact that they don't like each other to the pot. Yeah. And that we had unfinished business after the last one, and you know, you just you just have a fight that that, that has to happen. Um, it took a long time to make it happen, yeah. um, but uh, and, you know, and it, ultimately, it's up to the fighters themselves. They're the ones that get in the ring. They're the ones that sign the contracts. Yeah. Um, we just, you know, we hope, um, and uh, it certainly was the fight that I wanted from the second that the uh, that the fight was 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 terminated by Howard Foster. Yeah. I actually scribbled. Uh, a note to my um, my right hand man at, at Sky, Bob Me, <laughs> our, our historian, um, that said rematch, and he'd yeah. scribbled exactly the same thing, and we, <laughs> we sort of passed it over to each other. So yeah. um, it, it's the fight that we 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 wanted, and yeah. it's the fight that we've got. Lovely, and very quickly, obviously, two matchroom fighters, Scott Quigg and Kel Brook, yeah. both. Uh, there's a kind of uh, there's a, a desire from the British in public that they want to see them fight in these UK super fights. Yeah. Obviously you've got Kel and Amir Absolutely. And, and Carl and, and Scraps. And, yeah. Just a very quick one, say yes or no, Do you, will those fights happen in the I next I thought you were going to ask me who's going to win, which would be very months. difficult seeing as there's a lot of Scott Quigg fans around me. <laughs> yeah. um, Do you think they'll happen? Will they happen? I think that um, they could very well happen. Um, I, I would very much like to see um, the winner of Frotch and Groves fight De Gale or, or, or someone like that, the keeper. I just think while we've got the interest in the British yeah. public, I yeah. think I can see sort of super fights in Britain. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see Kel Brook and Amir Khan. Obviously, Amir's got his own business. He's got to deal with Luis, Cala Luis Calazo. He's got to then hopefully get that Mayweather shot. You know, but who knows? In, in nine months, a year down the line, if Kel wins his world title and they're both champions, that's got to happen, hasn't it, in Britain? Yeah. Brook Khan's a huge fight. Yeah. Quig Frampton. Yeah, the difficulty of super bantamweights, you know, Naz was a featherweight, but Naz had something different. He was yeah. just electric. You know, you wanted to watch him from the moment he, he floated in the ring, came in on a car, whatever he did, yeah. flipped in, said what he was going to say, delivered the punches with, with, with that power and the swagger. Naz yeah. had something about him that most little fighters don't have. Barry McGuigan had it because he... You know, he helped unite a, a country, or he certainly helped the political divide at the time in Ireland, and, and and say that you know, sport, let's rise above that. And I think that you know, for McGuigan and Hammond, I think that they were exceptions to the rule with yeah. featherweights. Yeah. You know, Scott and Carlo are super bantamweights, and I think that that's um, because they're smaller fighters, it's harder. However, I think Frampton's got a massive following in Belfast. I think Quig's getting a big following in Manchester. I think that that is a super super fight. You know, I've yeah. spoken to both. Of them yeah. you know countless times i've spoken to eddie countless times yeah. about quig and frampton it's a fight that must happen yeah. i'd like to see carl get his world title first whether it's leo santa cruz or whatever way he's gonna go i'd like to see him become a world champion because i i put this on record carl frampton will become a world yeah. champion i have absolutely <laughs> utmost respect for him i think he's a terrific little fighter and a great guy 
Another great guy is Scott Quigg. Mm. He's become a world champion. He's fulfilled that dream. Mm. But the dream fight yeah. for us over here and in Ireland yeah. is wherever it is, it's Quigg and Frampton. That's a fight I want to happen. And I really hope Brook and Khan can happen as well. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think there's really exciting times for the, for the British fight fans. And, yeah. and hopefully by the time they're happening, we'll see... Uh, Big Anthony Joshua in uh, in rather huge defining fights. He's got a long way to go. It's uh, it's nursery slopes at the moment, but I'm very confident that he can uh, he can fulfil his destiny as well and chuck Luke Campbell and one or two others into the into the pot. And you yeah. know, we're, we're in a good place. Well, it's, well, it's very uh, encouraging as a, a you know media member and fight fan in Britain <laughs> to hear someone at the helm who's so sort of hell bent on these fights happening as well. So that's very encouraging. Uh, Thanks a lot for your time today. No problem at all. No really problem. appreciate it, Adam. No Thank worries. you. Yeah.